Hello there, are you eager to learn about how to master Todoist? Well, I've been using Todoist over 10 years collectively and there's a lot of ways that I've tested it. And today I wanna to share how to master Todoist for 2025. So the key to mastering Todoist is really about a combination of balance and using the features to your own benefit. I'm gonna share some of the systems that have helped me. So let's dive into the laptop and show you round. So the best place to start is the capture area. Now there are different types of ways that you can capture inside of Todoist and I typically use it as a place to dump things for processing later. And this is a really helpful location, but there's lots of ways that you can capture stuff. Now, if you have a desktop device using a capture like the on my case, it's Command uh, Shift D, which opens up the quick capture. Now there is another way. You've got your mobile phone to hand. I always have that available and I've connected it with Siri, which you can also do with Google Assistant to quickly capture stuff. So if I ask it something like, can you remind me to do this? This is always really helpful. The third tip is if you have Android Auto or CarPlay inside of your car, connect that up with Todoist. I use this on a regular basis when I am driving as a safe way to capture stuff on the go. The second thing that not many people know is that they've got this brand new feature called Ramble. Now Ramble is a great way to start talking into Todoist and getting tasks out. So for example, I could say, book hair appointment next week at 2 p.m. And what it's gonna do is be able to contextualize all of that. And it does that by using the microphone. And anything that is associated will go into those days. But you can just quickly ramble as you're about to leave the house with things that are on your mind. Getting things out of your mind is a great way to maximize Todoist. And all you have to do is spread add task and it's added to the items list. So one of the things a lot of people don't know is if you go to board view, then you can actually change the view of your inbox area. Not many people know this, but you can create different areas inside of your account. So if I go up here and it press add section, I could section off my inbox for certain types of activities so that I'm not totally overwhelmed during the day. So you're probably wondering how does this actually work? Well, if you're capturing something on your phone, then you can quickly organize an inbox to a work area or a personal area. This will just help neaten things up so that it contextualizes what you're doing. So for example, when you're taking things from inbox at the end of the day over to the manage areas, you're able to do that. Something a lot of people don't know about the capture abilities in Todoist. So if you're looking to master Todoist, it's not about overwhelm. Overloading the stuff that you have inside of here is not the aim of the game. There are two areas I typically create when I get started. There are folder called personal and work. Now, both of these folders help me to organize what I need to do and what I need to focus on. Other people do prefer to create sub folders as well as different projects for all the different aspects of life. So it's totally up to you, but if you start adding due dates, that's when it gets overwhelming. Little bit of a pause. If you're looking for a focus timer that complements Todoist, then you should check out Bento Focus. It's our app that we've created that's gonna help you to be more focus orientated. You can use it alongside Todoist and it limits you to just three tasks, helping you to focus on what's important. So it perfectly combines using what I mentioned about Todoist and overwhelm with what we have with Bento Focus. So check it out in the link in description. We'd love to have you. Please do let me know if you do download it and I'll give you a big, big thank you. So something I didn't really appreciate is adding no due date to the work that you do. So what I typically do is when I create a project, I typically organize it in a board view. I then create sections, as you can see, of all of the different projects that I'm currently working on. Now, my goal here isn't to necessarily add a due date to everything and start doing things, then going to my upcoming area and seeing a flood of information. What I'm trying to do here is prioritize what I've got to do and just add them in a checklist form. Then I can go in every day and choose what is important to do on my list. It allows me to work down the list and be a bit more effective. So my rule is add stuff without due dates. And you can do that by going up here and setting the sorting to priority. This way you'll have a list of things that you need to do, but you won't forget it if you constantly come back to this. Now, some people ask me, Francesco, I will forget it. Checklists are obviously don't have a due date and some things will need a due date. Of course they will. But the thing that is helpful to do at least for the first 30 days is set a recurring task in Todoist with something like check checklists. This is a great way to make sure you go in here and prioritize what you need to do for the day 
and assign it to the day that you're on. Personally, I find this to be a lot better way to reduce overwhelm and just keep things uh, aware of what I need to do. Obviously, there are things that are going to come up in your day. There are things that are gonna be higher priority, but this just allows you to not see a spawn of tasks that just come as per day. I was previously listing like 20, 30 tasks, and this is probably a better way to go. So moving on to the today and upcoming areas. These are great areas for using the calendar mode. Whilst you can use the board modes and you can use even the list mode, I always love going into the calendar mode. Calendar mode is a great way to see what's coming up for the day. So the best way to maximize this is to have items that you need to do during the day that are from your checklist area, that they belong up here. They're just today, they're general, and they haven't yet been assigned a type of item or thing to do yet. So here's an example. So maybe I've brought these over from my checklist area. So what I'm all, what I'm simply going to do is go and drag these in where relevant. Now, if it's too overwhelming, drag these in one at a time. For example, I've set this one for four o'clock, but maybe I want to do it just before my meeting in the afternoon. So that is why it's important to be able to see what you've time blocked, but not overwhelm yourself at when you're going to do it, because things sometimes take too long and can sometimes be overwhelming. So I find this to be an effective technique to doing that. If you come over here and look on the right hand side, you can see when it's time blocked for the day. And if you don't get to the activity, you can right click and choose it for tomorrow and move the task on for later. This is a great way to start thinking more effectively about your tasks, or if it's in a certain project, the best thing to do is to add no due date. The benefit to this is if you tagged it in the right project, in the right section, then it's just going to go back in that section with the corresponding priority. Now, why is that beneficial? You can then go back into checklist and reorganize it for another day or assess it and see whether it's actually a beneficial task. I do this all the time because it doesn't overwhelm me. It makes me feel like I'm in control and just removing the date doesn't feel like I'm doing too much admin to the activities on my So one thing that a lot of people don't maximize inside a Todoist is something called habits. This is built into Todoist and it's a great extension that's gonna help you to do things that you might do every single morning. So for example, if you wake up and you want a morning routine or even a routine to prepare for work, then go ahead and select a period of time. Now what you're gonna do here is type in every day at 7 a.m. So as you can see, it's added that and it's got natural language input, which helps me to save the task. So if I go ahead and press enter, it's probably gonna to go to tomorrow because I'm already past 7 a.m. today. So here we are with the task. Now go to the top right hand corner and press track habit. Now what this is going to do is turn this task into a recurring item. Now, why is this beneficial? Well, it's not necessarily for the habit tracking abilities, which give you a streak, which you can see at the bottom of your comments inside of this Todoist habit. But the benefit that I find is a way to add subtasks and have them repeat. So let me show you what that means. So as you can see, what I can do here is go ahead and tick the items off as they come in. Now, once I go ahead and complete the parent task, all of the tasks that were inside of here come back. And why is this beneficial? Well, you don't wanna have to reset your subtasks, and I just find this a great way to set and forget on something that you do every single day. So if you want to do that, that is a really effective technique to really maximizing your daily routine. So we've talked very briefly about the upcoming area. And the upcoming area I think is probably one of the best ways to maximize your time. Um, one thing that I found is number one, don't add a Google Calendar if you block with Google Calendar. Now, right now, this week looks pretty overwhelming. I've got the US Grand Prix on Sunday and lots of different meetings or memory events or things that basically stop my routine. Now, I only put things in that either stop my routine or require me to be there present. They're sort of two important things. So picking up the kids, if I forget that, that's gonna basically block out my time and help me to see that uh, every single day that I need to do it. So only do that if you can. If you've got a really overwhelming time blocked calendar, then this is not the right system for you. So only connect to Google Calendar if you find it suitable for you. So another thing a lot of people get wrong is if you go to the sidebar inside of settings, then task count, switch it off. 
Sometimes this becomes really overwhelming seeing what tasks you got in there, especially if you have a checklist or items like that. So I re recommend switching it off if you don't find it beneficial or overwhelming to what you need to get done. So in terms of other features, Todoist has other capabilities like filters, labels, and also templates. They're all great ways to enhance your productivity. I don't particularly find them beneficial, but I think they are awesome features if you wanna go deeper. Filters and labels are fantastic if you wanna add more context to a task that you've got and give it a little home for focus. So if you only wanna see priority one tasks for tomorrow, then it's going to help you see what's important for the day ahead. Filters and labels only work if you have an objective in mind when you're going in to use them. Templates are also beneficial if you need a little bit of assistance. There are features inside of Todoist Premium that allow you to create actionable tasks created by AI generated from the parent title. But to be honest, I'm not sure that's always as beneficial. But templates are created by other people and you can steal them and use them to benefit your own account. So do check them out in the link in the description as well. Like any to-do list app, if you use it right, it really maximizes your productivity. So please check out the other to-do list apps that we're going to do a video on in the link in the description. There are loads of different apps to choose from, so do pick wisely before you jump in. But I think, personally, from using Todoist, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to helping you find the perfect tool as well as go deeper with them. Thanks very much, and I'll see you soon. Please do like and subscribe because it helps other people find the tool. And comment below if you found this tutorial beneficial. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon.